Welcome to Guns Gear Network, everyone. Appreciate you tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at the SDS Imports TSOS 1911. Stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. So today we're going to look at this TSOS uh, SDS 1911. This one is the 5-inch duty model, stainless steel, and we're going to discuss it a little bit on a tabletop review. I will officially do a range uh, report at a later date once I get a chance to do that uh, at the range and, and get some testing done, and I'll report back on that. Today I want to do a tabletop Part of the reason that prompted me to go ahead and do this tabletop review was uh, I'd recently did a video about changing out these grips that are on it, and one of the questions that popped up was about being a good value or, hey, did I like it, that kind of question. And so we're going to discuss that a little bit in depth today, uh, a little bit about the pistol itself. So let's go ahead and talk about value real quick. So the person asked me, was it a good value? Did I like it? You know, whatever. And the answer is yes and no on that regard, and the reason I say that is because at one time a uh, year or so ago these were in the 499 range i've seen them as low as like 489 499 so forth and then as of late i've seen these as high as 699 so that's 700 dollars. and like one of my local shops had one exactly like this brand new in the box it was 699 another shop in a neighboring town of mine that i go to been going to there uh, for a long time um they had one, um, they had a Kimber for $7.99. So for $100 more, I highly suggest buying the Kimber over a T-Sauce 1911. That's just, I mean, that's just facts. Um, and this is a new production Kimber, which I realize their new production Kimbers are not quite as good as their older Kimbers that they had uh, some years back because they've changed production uh, the way they do that. But at the end of the day, I would spend $100 more on that. However, if you can find one at a decent value, you know, 549-ish, you know, something like that, 569, maybe that's getting into a better uh, position that I think the value is there. I got lucky. I w I'd been studying these guns and uh, looking at them and trying to find one, and I was just holding off. And I happened to walk into another gun shop I've been going to as a kid been there forever and lo and behold they had one of these in their used section and it was like new in the box so i got it out looked at it i don't think it ever been shot other than maybe a magazine full at the most uh really good condition and um so he had it uh i was able to get it for 500 dollars uh plus tax which you know was fine i was i was okay with that so if you're saving a couple hundred bucks uh 300 so from 500 dollars to 800 yeah, now your value is back, uh, that I think it, it, they bring a good value. So these import guns, um, Rock Island kind of led the industry in that for a long time. Uh, TSOS uh, is another manufacturer. SDS is the importer. They've started bringing in some. Uh, they've got uh, about three different models that I know of. They've got a GI model, which is a clone of the original 1911. They have uh, this one, and they also have a four and a quarter carry model uh, of this same style uh, pistol here in the stainless. So let's take a look. It does bring a lot of value uh, when it comes to extra things that you're going to get that you probably won't see in a 1911 at this price point. So some of the things, let's check and make sure the firearm is safe. It is. Um, you're going to get a, a skeletonized trigger, skeletonized hammer, uh, ambi safety like that. Um, cut out here for extraction. That's something new they started doing some years later um, from the original GI version. You're going to get um, adjustable target style sights. These are the three dot. Um, I think they're referred to, uh, some people refer them to Bomar possibly or um, whatever. But anyway, they're, they're adjustable sights, uh, which is nice. You get a beveled magazine well here, a two-tone look. It is all stainless uh, with a two-tone uh, with some parts here. The um, I did do a little testing on making sure that it was tuned correctly. It is. There's a video floating around to show you how to test and make sure your uh, spring is not binding. And what you do essentially do is take your spring, I'm sorry, you take your uh, 
uh, end off here and you would push it all the way back and see and you do a witness mark I'll try linking to that video because I think it's pretty cool uh, they show you to make sure your gun is tuned uh, sometimes you'll need to cut a, a part of a coil off to get it to where the spring is not binding so it does come with one magazine and uh, this one came with a Chip McCormick. I, I was told, according to my uh, research, that these um, came with a, a different brand of magazine, not Chip McCormick. Um, but um, anyway, uh, I don't know if the guy, when he sold it, accidentally left the Chip McCormick in it. Um, but um, I think it's Metgar that actually makes the factory magazines for these guys. Metgar is a reputable company does makes magazines for a lot of different gun manufacturers. So anyway, if, even if you get the Metgar, you would be fine with that. Um, so let's look and see what comes in the box itself. So it comes with this hang, hang tag, uh, forge frame and slide, series 70 internals, uses standard 1911 magazines, um, hardened, uh, HBM hardened before machined, and I think it's got a hammer forge barrel, my understanding, but it doesn't say it on here. I think it's got a hammer forge barrel, according to what I've read and at least saw a couple of different places. Um, but it comes in just a standard cardboard box uh, with some foam inserts here. Uh, you do get a cleaning rod, a uh, cleaning brush, a chamber flag indicator, and a user manual. But that's pretty simplistic. It doesn't come with more than one magazine, which eh, I wish it came with two, but that's okay. Uh, 1911 magazines are not overly expensive anyway. So I had mentioned earlier in this video that I did a video prior to this one and I changed out the grips. So if there's one complaint about this pistol, it's got kind of cheap looking grips. I mean, they're okay. Uh, nothing, just a, just a black plastic checkered. Um, so nothing too, you know, crazy, but it's not uh, that great either. Um, but kind of give you the idea of what it looked like prior. So you can change grips out. That's the cool thing about a 1911. I discussed that in the other video is uh, you can change the total look of a 1911 from, you know, your basic GI kind of look to more fancy, to more old school, to more tactical. They got all kinds of grips now. So you can kind of personalize it. You can get custom grips made with your initials put on them, all kinds of things. But the trigger on this thing is really nice for the money. It's got a little bit of creep, just like most 1911s going to have right there till you hit the sear, and then it breaks. Um, but it uh, really nice, crisp trigger. The gun itself is a little stiff. I'm not going to break it down. There's tons of videos about this pistol already, but I just kind of want to talk about the value side of this uh, as much as talking about the, the pistol itself, to be honest with you. So when I took it apart and I was looking for wear just from general manipulations and stuff, um, it had very little uh, any kind of rub marks. So that means metal on metal contact. So they've spent a little time making sure this gun is made it up well. It was pretty dry when I got it, but again, being used, I don't know if the guy you know cleaned it and then didn't re-oil it. I don't know, but... Uh, you can, a lot of guys will take a 1911 and do like that and they'll rattle. Uh, this one has very little to no rattle whatsoever that I can hear. It's actually kind of tight, to be honest with you. Um, so it's, um, it's going to have to have a little break in time, but uh, overall, uh, really nice construction. I was pleasantly surprised when I picked it up and started looking at them and deciding whether I wanted one, but uh, I think everybody ought to own at least one 1911 in your collection, whether that be, you know, to go ahead and expend the money on like a collectible type Colt or something like this or one of these imports maybe from SDS or, you know, Rock Island or something like that. These are made in Turkey. Uh, there is something interesting on this pistol that I noticed after I got it is right here it says zig z-i-g m 1911 t dash turkey well turkey is spelled wrong they spelled it t-u-r-k-i-y-e uh, which is kind of interesting um i don't know if this was uh, uh, a discounted firearm because of that flaw but i've looked online and saw where it's spelled correctly t-u-r-k-e-y 
uh, kind of interesting on this one. Uh, it's got a little bit of their, this is their logo right here. It's kind of a flying falcon, eagle-ish kind of bird. Uh, it says duty model right there. So a lot of these imports, they'll have like big, huge writing up here. Taurus is notorious for it. Oh my God. They put huge writing up here. I kind of like this one. Uh, no writing on either side of the frame. So if you actually wanted to go in and uh, a lot of these gunsmiths now are doing like laser etching. That's pretty reasonably priced. You could have something laser etched up here uh, or whatever uh, if you wanted to do like a commemorative type pistol for you know maybe a family member or a thank you you know kind of uh, award ceremony kind of thing or something like that you could really dress it up with some laser engraving probably wouldn't cost you a whole lot. Uh, SDS tactical, uh, tactical or SDS imports I guess I should say uh, based in Knoxville Tennessee says it right there uh, and then your serial number being down here so Pretty cool, interesting, um, really nice, and uh, oh, it got the extended beaver tail here. I meant to mention that earlier with the uh, added features. The, a lot of these are added features that you would have to pay for from taking a standard 1911 and then adding those things that uh, you would kind of maybe possibly want in one. But um, yeah, guys, uh, so far I think I'm going to be happy with it. I am going to um, do a range report. I'll get to the range hopefully in the next few weeks, and I'll report back on my findings. Uh, and see how it does but anyway guys appreciate you tuning in if you've got an SDS 1911 whether it be this model the carry model GI model report back tell us how you like yours and your experience with them and so forth that would be always helpful to us at the channel and the people that watch the channel but anyway guys appreciate you tuning in if you got any questions post those below as always like share and subscribe bring another video shortly have a great day